Dear children, today we will take up history chapter 2nd, the extension of British rule in India. In this unit, you learn Anglo-Maratha wars. There were three Anglo-Maratha wars that were fought. Consolidation of British power in India. No succession rights for the adopted children. It was earlier also called as the doctrine of life policy. And the policy of subsidiary alliance introduced by Lord Wellesley. And the two Anglo-Sikh wars. We learned in the previous chapter that after three Carnatic wars, the English had won the French and uh, through the Carnatic Wars after winning over the French the English had made other European countries not to challenge them in India. They had gained complete political control over Bengal through Battle of Plassey 1757 and the Battle of Baxar 1764. By 1765, they had gained control over most of the eastern parts of India. Bengal, Bihar, Orissa and Avad. These were the eastern parts of India. Since the Marathas and Mysore state were dominant in southern and western part of India, the hold of the British was restricted to the Bengal and Bombay regions only. Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan of Mysore along with the Peshwa of Marathas were the only hurdles or the only impediments in the path of expansion to the British. So the Marathas, Hyder and Tipu of Mysore were the only hurdles, impediments for expansion of their empire for the British in India. The other were six in the northwest region other than Mysore and Marathas, the, even the six in the northwest region were also a great hurdle. In Punjab, Ranjit Singh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who emerged in the later part of 19th century, was a strong, formidable opponent to the British. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh was successful in organizing all the Sikh leaders. The British also waged a repeated war from the middle of 18th century to the middle of 19th century in order to extend their empire in India. Apart from this, apart from waging war against the Indian rulers. They also annexed various kingdoms. They were also able to take over, control over various kingdoms with their cunning policies, cunning plans such as the doctrine or the policy of subsidiary alliance and the doctrine of lapse policy. So, besides waging war, they also devised some cunning policies such as the doctrine of subservience and the doctrine of lapse. During this period, the British waged three Anglo-Maratha wars and two Anglo-Sikh wars. Since the Anglo-Mysore wars are discussed in Unit 4, of history. Here in this lesson, 
we shall understand the wars of the british against the marathas and the sikhs so you will be reading about anglo mysore war in the unit 4 of history therefore in this lesson we will focus on the three anglo maratha wars and the two anglo sikh wars first anglo maratha war 1775 to 1782 the second anglo maratha war 1803 to 1805 and the third anglo maratha war 1817 and 1775 to 1782 first anglo maratha war now what led to the enmity between the marathas and british if a war has to take place there must have been some kind of enmity which must have developed between the marathas and british the marathas installed shah alam ii we know that shah alam ii was the dethroned mughal emperor the marathas installed shah alam back on the throne of mughal empire in, in delhi and shah alam was under the control of the british after the defeat in the battle of baksar 1764 Now the emperor Shah Alam II in return gave Kora and Allahabad to the Marathas which he had earlier given to the British he had earlier given Kora and Allahabad to the British earlier now when the Marathas installed Shah Alam back on the throne of Mughal empire in Delhi he gave kora and alabad to the marathas so this resulted in enmity between the marathas and the british in the maratha kingdom there was the strong maratha man the maratha peshwa madhav rao after his death the death of maratha strong man madhav rao peshwa was a major setback to the marathas after his death even though his brother madhav rao's brother narayan rao came to power unfortunately he was murdered by his own uncle ragoba ragunath rao this is madhav rao peshwa after his death narayan rao came to power narayan rao was murdered by his uncle raghunath rao this resulted in infighting 
for the post of Peshwa. The Marathas themselves started fighting with each other for the post of Peshwa. The Maratha Federation, the Maratha Union, brought Madhavarao II, the minor son of Narendra. Narendra, we know that he was murdered by his uncle Raghunath Rao and the Maratha Union, the Maratha Federation brought his son Madhavara II who was still a minor for the post of Peshwa and because of that Raghunath Rao Raghavaba was upset and therefore he approached the British for support Initially, in the beginning, though the Marathas gained upper hand, later they had to lose Ahmedabad to the British. In the beginning, Marathas had gained upper hand, but as the war progressed, they had to lose Ahmedabad to British. The Maratha Federation, the Maratha Union was unable to sustain the war with the British. British proved to be very strong as the war progressed. And finally, the Marathas entered into the Salabai Agreement and the first Anglo-Maratha war ended. Students, make a note. The first Anglo-Maratha war ended with the Marathas entering into Salabai Agreement. The first Anglo-Maratha war ended with Salabai Agreement. And as per the agreement, Madhara II, Madhara II was named as the Peshwa. Madhara II became the Peshwa. The British, besides waging war and gaining control over Indian territories, they also devised some cunning plans through their policies. Two such policies, one is subsidiary alliance, the other one is doctrine of lapse. We will be reading about Doctrine of Lapse at the end of this lesson. Now let us see what this subsidiary alliance system is. This is again a very very important question. Who brought into effect the policy of subsidiary alliance? It was brought into effect by Lord Wellesley. Expansion of the British Empire took place at a faster pace, faster rate after the arrival of Lord Wellesley as the Governor General of India. By this time, the powerful states of Maratha and Mysore had gradually become weak and therefore the expansion was very easier. Lord Wellesley, who came to India as the Governor General around this time, followed three policies, three major policies with the intention of expanding British Empire in India. What were those three policies? One, the system of subsidiary alliance. Two, waging war against new states and administering the states directly that were under the control of British. Two policies, three policies, one subsidy alliance, waging war against the new states, three administering the states directly that were under the control of British. So, Wellesley 
adopted these three policies. Who introduced the policy of subsidiary alliance? Lord Wellesley, who came to India as the Governor General, brought into force, implemented the policy of subsidiary alliance in 1798. The main objective of this policy was to bring the local kings under the British control. So Lord Wellesley brought into force the policy of subsidiary alliance in the year 1798 in order to bring the local kings, the Indian native kings under the British control. Precisely the subsidiary alliance was basically a military protection agreement basically a military protection agreement between the East India Company and the Indian States. Now when any Indian ruler, native ruler accepted the policy or system of subsidy alliance Lord Wellesley, the British had put certain conditions while accepting the policy of subsidiary alliance. The Indian king, the Indian ruler has to accept to certain conditions. So what are the conditions of subsidiary alliance? Condition number one. The Indian king had to keep the British army in his kingdom. So any Indian king who accepts the system of subsidiary he has to keep a British army, portion of British army in his kingdom. Condition number two. The state concern the native ruler who accept subsidy alliance has to bear the expenses of the army. He has to meet all the expenses, expenditure of the army and also the salary, the wages of the soldiers. And along with that, the Indian king had to give certain revenue lands as well. So this is condition number two. Condition number three. The native king, the Indian king, had to have a British resident in his court. So he must allow one British officer as a permanent resident in his court. Condition number four. The king could not appoint any other European the king could not appoint any other European without the permission of the British. Without the permission of the British the Indian king could not appoint any other European. This is condition number 4. Condition number 5. In order to enter into any agreement or pact, in order to enter into any kind of agreement or pact with any Indian state, the permission of the Governor General was mandatory. Without the permission of the Governor General, the Indian ruler cannot enter into any kind of agreement or pact with any other state. So, permission of the Governor General was compulsory. It was mandatory. Last condition, condition number six. If a native ruler, Indian king agrees to all these conditions, 
in return for this services the east india company would offer protection to the state from any internal or external aggression so the british promised if you agree to these conditions we will provide you protection to your state from any internal or external attack external aggression so these are the six condition an indian king had to accept while entering into the system of subsidiary alliance so by applying this policy the british could place the indian states under their control through this policy of subsidiary alliance and through this system maintenance of the army became very easy for the british so because the army was maintained the expenses were borne by the indian king so it became very easy for the british to maintain such huge army after accepting this policy of subsidiary alliance the indian states were subjected to severe economic exploitation the indian states were severely economically ex- exploited so number 1 all the indian states came under the control of the british and the british exploited the indian ruler in other words after having accepted the policy of subsidiary alliance the indian states came under total british control in fact they became like puppets in the hands of the british among all the indian states the first indian ruler the first indian state to accept the system of subsidiary alliance was hyderabad the nizam of hyderabad was the first to enter into the policy of subsidiary alliance and after hyderabad the state of mysore avad tanjore the marathas there are and several other native kings entered into this agreement children that is all for today we shall continue this lesson in the next period let us see what is the assignment for today assignment 52 question number 1 whom did the marathas install back on the throne of mogal empire question number 2 whose death was a major setback to the marathas question number 3 who murdered narayana rao number 4 who was brought in as peshwa by the maratha federation question number 5 who introduced the policy of subsidiary alliance question number 6 the first anglo maratha war ended with the dash agreement question number 7 the first anglo maratha war was fought from dash to dash question number 8 which was the first state to enter into subsidiary alliance question number 9 why did lord wellesley introduce the policy of subsidiary alliance question number 10 which are the three policies followed by lord wellesley that's all the assignment for today 
and uh, we shall continue and take up the remaining part of the lesson in the next period till such time have a good